Welcome back, humans of the cardboard, to Just Nuts, guys. Today, we are looking at another deck profile. This time, I am profiling S-Force. It's a pretty cool deck. Um, the deck really wasn't doing much prior to Lightning Overdrive, but we got the new trap. We also got two new monsters that are actually decent, but not amazing for the archetype, but they do help. But mainly the trap card is like the big thing that, the, that we got out of this set that really allowed the deck to actually set up a decently powerful disruption or two going first. So, um, yeah, just a really cool deck. Um, I guess at the end, we'll, I'll probably talk about um, what I hope this deck gets in the future and, and where I think it's at right now. Um, but yeah, as far as how we start our list here, you want to go with the monsters first. Three gobbies of S-Force, Rappa, Chiamaru. This is a really good card. She has a quick effect to banish an S-Force card from hand. Bounce herself back to hand, and if you do, you can summon an S4 straight from the deck in defense position. It's a pretty good card. It can trigger on your turn, your opponent's turn, uh, and get you a free summon. It's really good. You just have to have another card in hand with her uh, that pairs nicely. Our next up for some other cards, uh, we have three S Force uh, Edge Razor, one S Force uh, Aura Fist for the other like low level monsters. Uh, Edge Razor is one of the new ones. He's actually pretty decent. When he's normal summon or special summon, he can summon another S Force monster from the hand in attack mode, which is actually kind of nice. Um, just helps you get that extra body out, which can be the difference between ending on, you know, one or two disruptions or and ending on two to three disruptions, something like that. Um, which is pretty good. So uh, Edge Razor, definitely pretty nice for the deck. Um, and then Orifist, only one of him. Um, he only comes up in like very specific situations where you can like get access to him on top of having other stuff. The big problem with him is he has to banish a monster to do his uh, from hand to do his thing. So he just says like if your opponent um, uh, activates a monster effect, you can banish an S-Force card from hand to destroy that monster. So again, you just have to be ending on an S-Force monster in hand to make him even worth it. But um, there are still specific situations where you can add him to like an already like two or three disruption board, um, which is nice. So he's nice, but you don't want to see him really. Then we have S-Force, Gravitino, and Platina, and Dog Tag as our higher level monster. Sorry, I got to figure out where. There we go. Um, yeah, these are all pretty cool. Um, Dog Tag is the new one, but Gravitino is like the best monster uh, outside of Chiyomaru. Uh, when he's normally special summon, he searches a spell or trap. And he's actually like the first one that I would say, and maybe the only one where its floodgate effect is actually relevant. He says any opponent's monster that's in the same column as an S-Force monster, when it leaves the field, it gets banished instead of going to grave, which is actually pretty decent. Um because you can just kind of like hit them at weird spots and force them to banish stuff when they link them off or synchro them off or whatever. And that can actually like really hurt their plays if they need those cards engraved. Uh, Platina, when she is um, summoned, normal or special summon, she can target a banished S-Force monster and special summon it. She's really only relevant for like Chiyomaru combos because you're going to go like Chiyomaru, banish something, then summon her, and then she can reborn the monster you banished. Or not reborn, but summon out the monster you banished. So, Gravitino plus Chiyomaru is really good uh, for that stuff. But you need two in the deck because if you draw one, you still want to be able to do that combo. And sometimes in a grindier match, you need to do that twice. So, pretty good there. And then uh, Dog Tag. This card's on. This card's Flugget Effect isn't really that relevant. I would just say that uh, the main thing is that if your opponent's summon, normal summons or special summons while he's in the hand and you control an S-Force on field, he can just summon from the field, uh, just summon himself from the hand. So you can just drop him into a column that a monster is already in. Uh, so if you already have like Gravitino, it just um, makes Gravitino's like floodgate effect a little more alive. Honestly not sold on playing dog tag at more than one. This may just be a one of. The, the times I find myself using him more is when I already have like a perfectly set up hand where I'm already ending like Gravitino, the trap and maybe justify with with gravitino still on field but that's like a really crazy hand um and like all i really want and like i still have like the field spell right like or something like that like i still have the field spell but i didn't even need it to search you can use it to search dog tag and now dog tag just adds like even more versatility to like you being able to hit them harder with the uh, gravitino lock um just like with with different zones so it's fine it's not an amazing card but it, it's fine um I don't know. Probably maybe a one of. I've been testing him at two though, and he's been fine. 
all things considered. He's just a banished target for, for Chiyomaru. So that's what's nice about this deck, is if you do draw the brickier ones, Chiyomaru completely unbricks them for you, essentially. All right, for the hand traps, we are playing three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, three copies of Fantastical Dragon Phantasme, and three copies of Dimension Shifter. Um, I don't know, like... This this felt pretty good. Like Ash is Ash. Don't need to explain that. Fantasma is one pretty good in this format right now, but also lets you dig for Shifter without putting any cards in Grave, uh, which is really good. So, um, you know, stuff like that. You can dig for Shifter, dig for Ash, fix your hand so that your your you know S Force cards play through Interruption or whatever. You just have an actual play. Something like that is actually pretty good. So this feels this feels like a right uh, hand trap lineup. I know Phantasmi is not the best going first, but um, it is what it is, you know. What are you going to do? This deck doesn't care about the graveyard at all. So just opening shift or even going first, you just drop it before you make any plays, and, and that, then your opponent for their turn is going to be under that Dweller-esque lock. It's crazy. Uh, but actually probably stronger. All right, for the spells, triple bridgehead, in, in fact, quadruple bridgehead, uh, triple Desires and one Rota. These are like your consistency cards here. Um, really nice. I mean, just really nice that Konami went ahead and threw this at a bad archetype. In fact, if Konami really just wants to learn how to make a bad archetypes worse, at least make them consistent. So throw stuff like this in there. Uh, the deck doesn't use the, ex uh, the extra except for like one card, really. So Stravagance is nice. And then the Rota. Chiyomaru happens to be a warrior randomly. So might as well max out on ways to get to her because she is our one and a half cards, uh, you know, combo. Uh, double S Force Showdown and Called by the Grave rounding out the spell lineup. Um, Showdown's fine. I mean, like, I don't think it's, like, particularly amazing. But again, same thing as, like, Dog Tag. It does allow you to, like, drop a new monster on the field into, like, an opponent's uh, column just so that you can get them under the Gravitino lock or whatever, um, which is pretty good. Um, but also you can drop like Chiyomaru on your opponent's turn and then Chiyomaru out again into like a Gravitino and get another search on your opponent's turn. Just pretty good. So it's just, just a nice card or it's just follow up. You just add a, an S-Force um, monster from Grave back to hand, which is also decent. So it's a good follow up. It's a fine card. I don't think it's amazing, but I don't know. If the deck got more better cards, I would definitely be one of the first cards you're swapping out. Not crazy, but it's fine. And then Called by the Grave stops Ash on Chiyomaru. Um, it's fine. It's like a it's like a protective card to help your combos go through, but it's also like really good in the mid range. Going second, hitting something like Heavenly Spheres, or you know what I mean, just anything. It like it's always good in like every game. It feels like there's like no bad situation for for called. And then for the traps, uh, three copies of S Force Chase, one copy of S Force Specimen, and three uh, sorry two copies of There Can Be Only One. Uh, these were the final two slots in the deck, so I ended up throwing There Can Be Only One. Felt like it's a really strong power card. Some some decks just, like, cannot play um, in the face of this card. There certainly are some that can, but for the most part, there are a lot that cannot. So we want to take advantage of that, get free dubs if we can. Um, and then for the ex explanation of this, some people might want to play more Specimen. But the idea here is with three Chase, you actually have a decent chance of just opening this. So doing your combos, you're almost always getting a search off of Gravitino. And if you already have this, then obviously you don't need that. So you can choose to either grab Bridgehead, uh, the field spell, our, what's the quick play spell's name? Uh, what is it? Uh, showdown. Or we can grab Specimen. So by just playing a one of Specimen, it means if we just get this, a Specimen a lot of times is going to be better follow-up than Bridgehead. So I just like that. And then it gives even future application down the line because on another turn, except the turn it, it uses its effect on field, it can banish itself as a quick effect to then change columns of one of your S-Force monsters. Which is pretty cool, you know, just get things lined up so that they can be under the Gravitino lock again. Um, so yeah, and then Showdown Chase is actually really good, or S-Force Chase. This is like the best new card we got. It pretty much says target uh, as many face-up cards uh, equal to the number of S-Force monsters you control and destroy them. It's nothing too crazy, but it also reads if you were to ever ban attempt to banish from hand an S-Force card, you could banish this card from Grave instead. So follow-up plays with Chiyomaru after she's bounced herself back to hand mean that you don't need to have like draw into another S-Force card to make her live again. You can just use this in Grave, which uh, definitely, definitely um, adds value there. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that is it for the main deck um, there. It's pretty consistent. I would just say the power is not too crazy. 
on the deck. It definitely has its ceiling, but um, I think being able to play something like Dimension Shifter helps us going second versus some of these decks that just outclass ours. And you can definitely get away with some free wins there. All right, taking us into the extra deck, this is going to be super simple. S-Force Justify. I only got two of this originally because I didn't anticipate needing three, but then I didn't realize that this deck wants to play Extravagance. So yeah, you should probably just play three because this is the only actual monster you are making um, out of here. So really good card if you don't know what it does. Um, uh, it has like an impermanence effect where we can just like once per turn, quick effect, target a monster, negate its effects, but then it moves it to a column he points to and he points three arrows up. And then during your turn, if he attacks, um, he immediately banishes every monster he points to. So at least the monster that you moved and then potentially others, who knows, um, which is really cool. Uh, it's really cool because he um, he's once per turn during either player's turn. So he can um, he can like negate something on your opponent's turn to move it into his zone. And then on your turn, negate something and move it to your zone too. And then you go battle phase and banish them both, clear a whole board. And now you're 2,600, you've got ways to go into your opponent, and it just helps like equalize the, the board state, which um, decks like this always wanna, wanna do, simplify it and, and then take control. Uh, the rest is all just generic stuff that's just like fine. We're never really trying to make them, it's mainly just like, well, okay, these two at least. So this is just if you end up playing against something that's playing Dogmatic Maximus, you can, either, you can send either of these to help like hinder them, at least, <laughs> you know, punish them for playing a greedy card. And then you just have a ton of Super Volley targets. I've got two Starving Venom, one Dragostopelia, double Trifia Veritum, double Mud Dragon, uh, one World Chalice Guard Dragon Almerduke, one uh, Violet Chimera because Salamangrates may be potentially playable again. I don't know. We'll see how popular they are. And then Chimera just because it takes any two Cybers, so that could hit Attic Mister potentially. Um, it could also hit stuff like... Um, what is it, Code Talkers, as well as, um, you know, Salamangre. So it's just a little more versatile than like Chimera or Almerduke, but they give you a higher ceiling um, should you resolve into them. So obviously I'd be siding Super Poly here. I just think you have so much range in the extract to play so many Super Poly targets that I think it's pretty good. I don't even know if the format really supports Super Poly that much, but I don't know. This deck needs something that feels like a little unfair and Super Poly definitely is great at like equalizing board states. Um, I will say the deck doesn't love discarding though, because you want you want to have as many cards as ha in hand as possible, because like Chiamaru has to banish from hand um, as cost, I believe. Yeah, it does banish as cost, which is really tough. So if she gets impermed, ashed, whatever, one she won't bounce back to hand, which is actually probably better because it means she's a quick effect, so she goes she'll still be on field to do her effect on your opponent's turn, which is not the worst, uh, as long as they don't have like another ash or another imperm or whatever. Um, but that's pretty cool. So yeah, S-Force, um, it's a cool deck, it really is. I like the way it functions, but here is my biggest qualm with the deck. I actually think like having a starter like Chiamaru, really strong. Having a search card like Gravitino, really strong. I wish he was not level five, I wish he was level four or lower, so that worst case scenario, he could just be like a respectable normal summon where you just go normal Gravitino, grab the trap and boom, and you at least got like a, a Dryden pop out of it. Sucks that it's a level five though, but I, I get it. Um, and then Platina is like, okay. I'll say, I'll leave her here as, as like, okay, right? Because she just like, she's a nice extender going through the combos to like bring back the banished monsters, but she is still bricky, so fine, but she's a necessary piece. Um, then you have Justify, of course. He's actually a pretty good boss monster, all things considered. Uh, he only takes one S-Force and then his other materials can be anything else, which is kind of cool. Then you have Bridgehead, and then I would say the Trap is pretty good. S-Force Chase, Specimen's okay, we'll leave him there as well. So these are like your better cards. Here's my problem, right? All these are good, right? You have Consistency in Bridgehead and Rapachi and Maru being a warrior, so you've got stuff like Rhoda, eight copies of her, so you see her plenty. Um, the problem is your other cards. All these other cards that you have to play because you just need names, they're just not good names, right? Like I even left out the other guy because he's awful. He literally just changes battle position. It's so bad. Um, showdown, definitely weak. And then, yeah. So here's the biggest thing for me, right? I don't think Chiamaru needs to have an amazing floodgate effect um, because she's your starter. She bounces herself back to hand anyway, whatever. Um, but I think, and Gravitino is the only one with the actual good effect. Well, I mentioned him like 20 times throughout the video, right? That, that banish effect is actually pretty good. The problem is all of these cards are just like super meh. 
And they just like get even more meh because their floodgate effects are like so whack. They're so weak. They don't do anything. Edge Razor says monsters in the same column as an S Force can't be used for link three or hires. That could have just been links in general. Just lock your opponent out of link summoning. Nope, that's too strong apparently. This text's too good. Apparently they couldn't give them that. Orifist says your opponent can't target their own monsters that are in the same column as an S Force. Okay, I don't know how many decks actually target their own monsters on field, but that's about it. And then you have Dog Tag. Dog Tag is the most disrespectful one out of all of them because he says during your main phase, your opponent cannot activate monster effects in the same column as S Force cards. That doesn't sound awful, but here's the thing, right? Like our main phase, this card jumps out of the hand. It could have been an extra disruption in the deck and even Floodgate. But no, that would have been too good. So he jumps out of the hand just to make Gravitino's of, like Floodgate effect a little bit better. And nobody else's really, really matters. So yeah, I don't know. I just think it's a mechanic where like we think about like Mech Knights who have stuff like uh, World Legacy Secrets, which just straight up is skill drain, searchable skill drain for the archetype. And like they could have easily just made this like the skill drain for the archetype and they didn't. They just made it unusably bad for as far as like the floodgate effect goes. And that's pretty much it. So I think like if Konami really wants to like support S-Force down the line, um, they just need to make like better main deck monsters. I don't, it doesn't even really particularly matter what their actual effects are. If they actually just have better floodgate effects, the deck can just kind of facilitate that better. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they'll do it down the line, but this does seem one of those, like one of those weird archetypes that just like won't get supported for a long time for just like, just because like not that many people care about it. And I get it. If you're Konami, you're like, well, we got to support the stuff that we know people care about. Make the big bucks. Um, but hopefully at some point they'll come back to this. At least it ties into the lore with like Psy frames and, you know, Psy frame, you know, Gamma at least is relevant in the meta. So, you know, they have relevance via its connection to that. But we'll see if that means they'll ever get support, you know, in the, in the future. So those are my thoughts on S-Forts. It's a cool deck. I think it's tier three at best. I think it can steal some games because it does do some things. You have the potential to pop two to three cards off of Chase. You have grind ability. Um, you have the ability to play some really strong stuff like there can be only one and that can steal duels and dimension shifter. But I do think the deck itself as an engine definitely falls short and uh, you're just not ending on as powerful stuff as they could have been at the end of the day. So that's going to do it for me here today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet and you want to see more stuff from me later down the line. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.